All right, well, you're joining us for a new online course, and this is called Fundraising for Community and Unity. Now, before I get into the agenda, I just want to quickly call out Sloan Coleman from Tiny Little Monster. Sloan is an Inksoft customer who had, on her own accord, launched a simple fundraising program that's gained a lot of traction. And Sloan wanted to share this program with, you know, really the industry at large, because this is something that can really help make a big impact on local communities who, of course, have been struggling as a result of COVID. Now, there's not a single community um, you know, that, that's not impacted right now. So the reason we, we're getting behind this program is we think that this is a real opportunity for you to go into your local community and uh, help uh, generate some good. So with that said, again, a quick shout out to Sloan for being willing to share this program and, and get behind promoting it, even to her competitors. So pretty exciting to see the industry come together. All right, so let me kind of establish my quick agenda here just so you know exactly what my ambition is in today's online class. First, I want to give you the what, really really answer the question, like, what is this program? Uh, and of course, inform you of the, the details of the program so you can take full advantage of it. We also want to answer the question, why, right? In order to be activated to taking action and getting motivated to roll up your sleeves and go out into your community to help raise funds, uh, we want to understand all the sort of the nuance, right? The why we're doing this. And then lastly, I'm going to conclude with the how, the techniques and the mechanics of launching this fundraising framework to do some good in your local community. So that's my goal today. So let's start with the first part, which is the what. What is this here for good fundraising framework? So this framework's really simple. It's one central online fundraising store. So in this case, you can see on the right-hand side, Sloan had launched a dedicated single fundraising store for her here for good initiative, right? So the, the reality of this program, after you launch your single online store, is you're gonna go out into your community, go to all of your existing customers, and you're gonna engage them to participate in a free, no commitment fundraising opportunity. And we'll get into the details of this opportunity in a moment's time, but the reality is, on this central online store, you're gonna have all of the local businesses and organizations that you service centralized. So that is the community has a single destination to go to to support their favorite local independent business. So think about your shopping habits in your local community. Maybe you pick up coffee from the local roaster. Uh, maybe you pick up uh, baked goods from your favorite local bakery. Um, you as a decorator and as a printing business, you of course have a position and a role in your local community. And so this is a great place to promote your business as well. So think of this as a centralized resource for the community to go to support their favorite independent business. And this is critical to, as you'll see as the marketing framework unfolds, having a single point of entry is important to get maximum momentum. Now the reason this is unique is in the past we've seen fundraising stores that are dedicated to a specific organization or a specific group. This is aggregating all of those people in the community into one central location. And of course, you know, to answer the second question of the, the what, you know, really this is an initiative to service and provide funds to local businesses and your local community who, again, are being impacted by COVID. Uh, and really, the, the end result of this is to build awareness in the local community. It's to unify and rally your community. And really, it's to help raise funds, not only for these local independent businesses, but it's also to help you raise some revenue to sustain your local business. All right, so let's go into the next uh, part of the framework. I really want to call out some of the key marketing messaging that Sloan had developed. And really, it's a sense of unity, right? So we're in this together. Help keep local businesses here for good. So that's kind of the storytelling behind this notion of here for good. You know, we want to keep our local community strong and vibrant. And so here's what we're doing in support of these local businesses and organizations. So really there's kind of two parts in terms of the marketing presentation to persons in the local community that would help uh, you know, buy a garment or a product to support local you know, organizations or uh, businesses. So the first consideration here is, hey, we're asking you to show your support. When you buy a garment from this community fundraiser, $10 of each sale will go to the independent business that you're supporting. And of course, you're supporting a business by choosing to buy a t-shirt it represents that business, right? So again, going back to the example, I love my local brewery, my local roaster, my local baker. Hell, I might buy three shirts to pledge my support to these three businesses that 
I really depend on and I really uh, I'm a big fan of, right? So uh, yeah, in this case, ten dollars would go uh, to, from each cell uh, towards that independent business. Now the other consideration here is, hey, you get something. You're giving support and help, but you're also going to get a super comfy T-shirt that's going to allow you to continue to show your support for that local independent business. So this is really a, 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 an important consideration. Of course, you could launch a GoFundMe page and you're just going to raise money. And of course, I don't want to diminish the value of that. That's very important. But the reality here to engage and activate a consumer, if they can feel good and they can help a business uh, by, by giving, but they can also get something in return, uh, that has a lot of merit to it, right? So the reality is you're going to get a super soft t-shirt and you're also going to help keep another local business alive, which is our print shop. So think about if I buy one shirt, I'm supporting my local favorite independent business. I'm also supporting a second business in my community, which is the local print shop. And I get a super soft premium t-shirt as a result. That's like three benefits in one. So I want you to understand the nuance behind this program because this is what's going to help you get maximum momentum and value from the fun fundraising uh, results. So let's go on to answer the question why. And I trust me, I've limited our presentation to about 11 slides here, so we're going to get through this really quickly, but I just want to make sure everybody has a clear understanding of all the, the nuance that's going on in this program. So in terms of the why, think about local businesses and organizations, right? They all have what I'm calling a fan base. They all have you know, people that support them, right? So think about the local uh, yoga studio, right? They have uh, yoga evangelists that are constantly going to yoga. They love yoga. They, they again, financially support the yoga studio by buying uh, you know, passes or uh, monthly membership. So with that said, every local business and organization has the ability to communicate with their fan base uh, and to activate them, right? So we're going to tap into that fan base and we're going to implore our independent businesses to do some outreach to get the most momentum for their fundraising program. Now, the second consideration is given the current state of affairs, uh, people are more activated than ever to help. Now, reflect back on post 9-11, reflect back on post Katrina, you know, whenever there's a national disaster, you know, Americans rally up, they will wait in line to donate blood uh, until there's a surplus, you know, they help raise funds. This is a primal human behavior and instinct, right? It's a survival mechanism. And that's what makes humans distinct and unique from other primates, right? We get activated to help. So with that said, I'm not saying take advantage of this or be nefarious, but the reality is I'm a participant in my local community and I don't want to see a small business suffer, especially a small business that I rely on or I really love. And again, I'm a fan of different businesses in my community. I'm more activated than ever to help. So we got to take that under consideration. Now, I've already mentioned one of the uh, considerations here, which is that you know trifecta of benefits, right? I get to give but I also get something in return, a cool t-shirt, which is gonna allow me to identify with my tribe, right? With the local yoga studio that I love and I wanna support. It's a, it's a merit badge, a badge of honor, right? And again, this is why we think you can get the most momentum from a fundraising program that has a cool, tangible, uh, branded product because there's, again, extra value there, extra meaning there. And as we, we discuss, as we go through the program, Sloan's advice is take the premium basic garment and upgrade it. You know, focus on premium garments. That way you can justify a $20 price point for a garment, right? And again, you're going to give $20 or $10 to the organization and $10 will go to supporting, of course, your business. Now, I also want to point out, since we're here on this screen, uh, and I'll show you the mechanics in a moment's time, but when you set up an Inksoft online store for the fundraising effort, every product will have its own dedicated URL. So think of that as its own dedicated unique page, if you will you wanna provide that URL to each independent business that's participating in this fundraiser. And of course, they can distribute that URL wherever their fans exist. So whether it be LinkedIn or a Facebook uh, business page, you know, they can call their audience and their fans to action and ask for help and have a single destination to go to to pledge support. All right, so let's go on to the next, uh, and we're gonna move now into the how, which uh, is the exciting part. So how do you really take advantage of this marketing framework and how does it operate? So the first consideration here is you as a steward of your local community, and again, you are a participant as a business in your local community, you need to roll up your sleeves and do a direct and personalized outreach. You need to communicate this fundraising program in simple terms to local independent businesses and organizations in your area. 
So when we say direct and personalized, think about you leveraging that you know smartphone uh, with a 4K compatible you know video recording capabilities and record a personalized address to your community. So this personalized notion, you can make the point that, hey, we're affected and we're a steward of this local community and we want to help and here's how we're doing it. And really you can spell out and define the details of this fundraising program. Of course, uh, we want to think in terms of you know, quick, and concise, and simple. Now, number two, you want to, again, upgrade a basic economy garment to something that's premium. And again, that's going to activate people to uh, take, take advantage and participate here. So you're going to build in some uh, some premium value uh, with the product itself. Now, Sloan points out you want to find that premium garment that has strong inventory positions right now. So be be mindful, you know, of your suppliers' inventory levels and, of course, their warehouse distribution capabilities to make sure they're not impacted uh, before you commit to a specific product and SKU as part of this program. The third consideration here is to, to get extra mileage from this program and get some longevity. Think about a branded a tag that you'll print on the garment just to ratify and, and again, uh, bring a sense of unification to your community. So think about developing a brand, and we'll go into that in a moment's time, uh, behind this initiative. And we'll explain the, the value and the virtues of that. And again, if you can reflect this on the physical product, it's going to bring some more value. Now, the, the fourth consideration is, given some of these local businesses are dramatically impacted, you want to focus on weekly payouts. So from the fundraising results, you will do weekly payouts via Venmo or via PayPal. Now, pro tip, if you are gonna send funds via PayPal, make sure you use friends and family to avoid uh, PayPal fees. Um, so you wanna focus on weekly payouts to bring uh, you know, immediate uh, help and value to these local independent businesses. We've already talked about the fifth step, which is a single centralized store. Now, let me carve out and really earmark now an important reason why this is centralized. Think uh, about going to local media and getting free press coverage. And of course, news outlets and local media is probably star for positive news right now, especially if it has, you know, it's, it's newsworthy, it's gonna impact the local community. Uh, we, we've already seen a tremendous amount of Inksoft customers getting this local press coverage, being interviewed, um, you know, and, and of course, continuing to get interviewed as the story develops, right? As you hit a fundraising milestone or, you know, uh, you know, there's a, a new business that enters the program. So again, if local media outlets are promoting this, and if your hashtag is trending your local community, when the store is centralized and consumers have a single point of entry, it just brings more value. It lessens the need to market individual uh, dedicated stores. So the sixth component here is get commitment to promote, refer and share. So since you're gonna be offering this program at no commitment and no cost to these businesses, you're gonna ask them to help make the most of their fundraising opportunity by sharing frequently uh, wherever they communicate with their fans, their customers, uh, their, their tribe. So daily, they should do an outreach to their local community to say, please help support our local uh, yoga studio. And you can do that by buying uh, a specialized t-shirt here. So the other consideration beyond you know, promoting this fundraiser to their audience you know, so many local businesses are connected, right? Think about the baker probably has a great relationship with local cafes since they, you know, might be a wholesale provider to those local cafes, right? So think about how you can activate business owners to reach into their network to accelerate this program. The more people that participate, uh, the better results the local community will get. And I'll show you examples of that in a moment's time. So ask your clients to promote their own fundraising t-shirt or wearable or product whatever you're going to decorate, but also get them to bring people into this fundraising network to accelerate and provide value. All right, so let's continue to move on here. I want to point out something that uh, this is kind of classic old school textbook advertising uh, 101 stuff, but I think this is super important for every marketing and advertising initiative. But let's talk about reach and frequency and optimal exposure. So reach, of course, is the number of you know, consumers that you're going to, they're going to be exposed to your marketing message, right? So you can see if I get local free press coverage, that's going to help get more reach and get more inertia with this fundraising program. Uh, the more I can get other businesses to participate and share and spread the message, well, the greater reach that we have. 
So in this case, the greater reach you have, the, the more fundraising uh, value you're going to deliver to all of these local businesses, right? Um, so think of reach in terms of spread. Now let's talk about frequency. You know, frequency is the number of times that that person would be exposed to the marketing message. So let's say that I hear about this fundraising initiative on local um, on the local news, uh, the evening news. But then I hear about it uh, when I'm checking my email from the yoga studio that I frequent, and I hear it again. So the more times that a consumer can hear a message, uh, the more likely it's going to uh, remain top of mind, and you get mind share. And I believe the last I read, you know, the, the typical consumer is bombarded with over three thousand marketing messages a day. So cutting through the clutter and repetition is super important uh, with all advertising and marketing efforts. And really the point of reach and frequency is optimal exposure, right? So conventional textbook wisdom says that a, a consumer on average needs to hear a message three times for it to, again, you know, get mind share uh, and be anchored in their mind. I would say that, you know, that that's old school. You know, probably conventional wisdom is probably six, right? Uh, because again, consumers are bombarded by messaging every single day, every single hour. So the, the reality is if you want to be a, the best steward of fundraising in your community, you have to get repetition and get spread with this message. And again, reach out to local media, get press coverage, use a trending hashtag, develop a brand and identity that will uh, help optimize, again, uh, reach and frequency to get you optimal exposure. All right, so since I've mentioned branding, here's an example of the branding that uh, Sloan had uh, developed as part of this program, Here for Good. And you can see help keep uh, local businesses here for good. And of course, you can use this messaging uh, and of course, substitute you know, your local community, right? Whether it be a local city or even a local or a, a state, uh, you can of course, insert uh, your local uh, domain uh, to bring attention. So think about developing branding that will speak to your local community. Now, here's another example from Anchor Screen Print. Um, they of course, developed two versions of branding uh, for their initiative in their local community. Uh, and you can see in the second one uh, to the right, you can see how they brought in specific uh, iconography and imagery that will talk about restaurants and bars and grills and you know maybe hospitality uh, and really just concrete that there's a lot of folks in the local community that are impacted right now. So I think that's a good example in branding for the local community. I'll give you a few other examples as we go. I also wanted to call out and underscore uh, something that really resonated with me that Sloan had mentioned. Now, as a decorator, as a print shop, as a local business in your area, with this program, since we're providing you the framework uh, for free and giving you sort of the, 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 the playbook here, the reality from Sloan's perspective is you are responsible for marketing the heck out of this thing to do the best for your local community as, uh, as you possibly can. So think about that. This is your opportunity to be uh, a steward to your community, you can generate some goodwill and you can do some good by leveraging your co core competency, which is, you know, of course, branding and decoration and imprint. So this is the time now to mobilize and activate and uh, accelerate this. Alrighty, so I want to call out before we transition into the mechanics, we're going to get really dig into examples. Uh, and I'm going to share many different examples of how Ingsoft customers are bringing this you know, marketing framework to their local community. I want to call out for a moment's time, you know, if you have questions, if you need help, whether it be building an online store, whether it be creating products, whatever it might be, the Inksoft team is here to help you make the most of this program and help you make a big impact, uh, again, at your local community. So reach out to us and you can do that by visiting us at Inksoft.com. You can email us at contact at Inksoft.com or support at Inksoft.com. And of course, give us a call. Our industry experts are on standby to help you to whatever degree we can. All right, so let's transition now. And what I want to do is kind of do a deep dive into the original Here for Good uh, store. And again, this is the store that uh, Sloan Coleman at Tiny Little Monster had launched for her local community. So first things first, I want to also give uh, a shout out to the uh, you know, branding studio that had actually developed the Here for Good uh, you know, brand image here. And that is Studio X. So shout out to uh, the logo that was designed for Here for Good by Studio X. So let's take a look at the architecture and really the settings for this online store. And I just want to plant some ideas. And again, this is getting now into the mechanics of this fundraising, fundraising initiative. So at the very top of this online store, you'll notice something called the promo bar. So notice as I scroll through this online store, that promo bar stays persistent. 
So this is an optional uh, feature inside of any, the Inksoft online store framework. And the, the value of the promo bar is it lets you uh, do a call to action or display important marketing messaging. And of course, you know, we read top to bottom, left to right. So this is the first thing that a consumer might see. So here, in this case, Sloan calls out 100% of proceeds go directly to support you know, local businesses. And then she calls out the hashtag. And of course, this is a great way to, again, help develop reach and frequency and optimal exposure. So let me kind of continue to scroll down here and uh, give some insights into some of the other considerations when you're setting up your online fundraiser. So again, in terms of marketing messaging, I actually want to earmark something that we're about to deploy but we've taken our marketing resources and, and converted them into helping develop resources for you to get this program out and uh, accelerate things. So we're actually writing marketing copy and content in different voices. So you can choose the voice that aligns with your brand. And this is turnkey marketing copy. So if you want to send out an email uh, to your network, if you want to do a blog posting or social media messaging, We've actually written all of the content for you, and you can just insert your business name, your URLs, your hashtag, uh, and you can feel free to personalize it. So we're gonna release this under the Creative Commons license, so it'll be yours to use. So make sure to stay tuned to uh, our social media channels and of course our blog where we will be releasing this content for you to take action. I'm hopeful I'll have it by the end of today. Uh, again, a great way to mobilize and help you take, the, uh, take advantage of this program. But in this case, you can see how you can use uh, you know, the product component and you can use the sort of the headline and the subheadline here to describe, hey, we're in this together, help keep local businesses here for good. I also want to earmark something important here, you know, make sure that you're being clear with the details of the program. So you're not seen as, you know, being a murky fundraiser because it could lead a lot of folks to believe, hey, is this a scam? Is the money really going to the organization? So you want to be clear with the terms and the details of the fundraising program. So in this case, show your support for your local favorite independent business. Again, call out $10 from each sale will go to that business, and you'll also help uh, you know, support us, uh, the local print shop. So make sure to call out and display those terms and details. Now I do wanna point out, notice how all of these, each t-shirt here is a different independent local business. And so you can see there's the coffee roaster, there's the, the, the taco truck, um, there's a farms, you know, farmers markets, coffee roasters, you know, barbershops, salons. Again, all of these local businesses, they have customers that are willing to support them. Now, one other thing I want to point out that every product, again, if I click on the product, it's going to have its own dedicated page. And again, you can copy this URL and that's the URL you're going to want to provide to that specific independent business so they can promote and distribute through their social media channels, through their communication channels, uh, to activate people to help pledge support uh, to keep the local taco truck operating, right? So um, those are some basic mechanics. Let's continue to scroll down here, and go to the bottom. We'll talk about some other critical considerations here. I do wanna point out what's really spectacular with this, um, this program is, you know, every time I refresh this uh, website, more and more and more businesses are participating in this uh, program, which is pretty damn exciting. Um, so again, this is something that can accelerate. You can uh, gain some real gravity. Every time you're adding more businesses, you're just going to get more compounding effect here. So let me call out a few other mechanics here that can be really important. You know, think about using some of the custom content features in Inksoft, uh, the Inksoft Online Store Framework to, to really help mitigate any customer service issues that you might contend with. When will I get my printed t-shirt? Um, so think about calling out, hey, when should I expect to receive my orders? So think about the FAQs, right? Frequently asked questions and address those out of the gates right up front so you can mitigate having to respond to emails and deal with um, customer service issues because you can, again, solve a lot of that up front by being clear with your messaging. The other thing I want to call out is the, uh, uh, the countdown component that's part of the Soft Store Framework. This is a great way to build some urgency. So in this case, you can see there's 26 days left to help uh, support the local community. So think about time boxing this so you can build some urgency in terms of activating people to participate and pledge now as opposed to delaying. I would also encourage you to think in terms of how could you use maybe uh, graphics and products as limited edition imprints? Hey, we're only ever going to print 500 of each shirt, so get yours while you can. Think about extending this in other ways 
you know, telling other stories with the product. Hey, if you wear this shirt to the local brewery, uh, you'll get a dollar off a pint, you know, for the next uh, X period of time. So think about going and activating those local businesses to bring even more long-term value uh, to their operation organization, right? Again, we got to think in terms of tribal. And I think of a book that I read a long time ago that's cemented this notion of tribal with branding and imprints and decorated products. Uh, if you have some downtime, you should definitely read the book, How Soccer Explains the World. And this book goes on to use soccer hooliganism as a way to describe, you know, uh, those that are evangelists for their favorite soccer club. You know, think about they're wearing a soccer jersey. They have banners that have the emblem for their favorite soccer club. They will shank and fight each other, right? So tribal. So think in terms of how you can leverage this notion of tribal to get even more value and bring more value to the local businesses that, again, use service. Alrighty, so let's continue to uh, scroll down here. I want to give a few more insights into some of the custom content. I think Sloan did a brilliant thing here by saying, hey, your favorite places plus Tiny Little Monster, which, hey, we're the local uh, print shop in the community. You know, you add these two things together. When you pledge support, you're helping two local businesses in the local community. So here you can actually do a little call out and maybe talk about, you know, your business and how you're an employer you pay payroll tax and you help support the local community by you know, X means. So again, this is a real opportunity for you to engage your local community, tell your story and uh, position yourself as a business that's also being impacted. All right, a few other considerations here as we scroll down is, hey, if you wanna help beyond buying a, a decorated garment, inform you know, shoppers how they can help you know, uh, get the most impact for the local community. Share this page with your friends and family on social media. Tell your favorite local establishment about this project. Invite them to participate. There's no cost or commitment to get started. Again, refer and share. Activate people, give a strong call to action, and tell people how they can help. Be very specific here. Uh, so with that said, maybe uh, the, the third consideration, as you can see from Sloan's example, is, hey, let's help rally and muster the, the most possible visibility. Follow and tag your favorite places um, and inform them of this opportunity. So this is using uh, the uh, call to action component inside of the Inksoft store framework where you can put in your messaging, but you can also link to, um, you know, again, get people to refer or direct them where appropriate. Alrighty, so the next major consideration, in fact, I would argue that this is probably the most important mechanic of the fundraising program. So, I mentioned earlier, you know, and I think a lot of the concern will be, hey, am I going to be seen as an opportunist? You know, could this be perceived as scammy or murky or uh, nefarious? Um, if you use the uh, fundraising component, which displays with all transparency the fundraising uh, dollar amount or units sold, you're going to mitigate that. So inside of Inksoft, there, of course, is a fundraising functionality where you can display the metrics of the fundraising program. So in this case, $12,900 has been raised for our local community of our goal of $20,000. So make sure to use the fundraising component inside of uh, Inksoft to make sure that you are being transparent, you're building an accountability and visibility into uh, the performance of the fundraiser. And I think that's going to help mitigate, again, any consumer that might, you know, think or question whether this is legitimate or on the up and up, right? Um, also, if you're getting press coverage, you're going to mitigate that because press coverage might be seen as uh, trustworthy, again, because it might be newsworthy. If people in your community are supporting it by sharing and retweeting and things of that nature, you're also going to build some uh, trust and credibility uh, and influence as you go. Uh, we'll talk more about the fundraising component in a moment's time because there's really two main methodologies as it relates to the fundraising display. It could be dollar amount or units sold, and we'll talk about that in a moment's time. And before I get too much further, I do want to talk about this notion of the program that Sloan launched, which is, you know, tell your local independent business that you need their logo. Of course, you want it in vector format if you can get it. You're going to do a single color imprint on a product color that you'll either recommend to them or that aligns with their branding. So you could be a good steward and ambassador here and helping them you know, with the right product color selection or you can invite them to participate with whatever options you wanna display. So the reality is, again, this is a single color imprint on a product here, right? And so you're also gonna fix the price. 
So you're not going to worry about the dark garment with an underbase. You're removing all of that complexity and you're going to standardize every t-shirt is $20. $10 goes to the local business and $10 helps to fundraise for your local business, right? So keep it simple, stupid, right? So let's scroll down and uh, the last consideration here, the last component that uh, is in use in this particular example is the, uh, the form component. So think about lead generation, lead magnet, and not in terms of a standard lead, uh, lead but think about you're activating people uh, in your community that need help. Start making money for your independent business. We're issuing payments on a weekly basis. So here you can describe the program uh, and, and give the terms and details, and you can activate people to filling out a form, which again, Ingsoft will host and, and send you an email alert when a new form is submitted. But this is your way to get uh, folks to submit, uh, hey, I need help. We're a local uh, church group, and we wanna raise funds. We wanna activate our community to get value here. So think about also taking advantage of that form component that's inbuilt into Ingsoft to generate uh, leads and inquiries that you can help um, to either add to this fundraising program or maybe launch an independent one if that's appropriate. So let me give you a few more examples. Uh, I have a few more minutes here before I wanna transition into your questions, which I see are bubbling up, so continue to insert those into the Q&A function uh, using the Zoom control panel. All right, so here's another example, and you can see uh, this example speaks strong. So at the very top, you can see the promo bar, $10 from every shirt sold goes directly to the business of your choice. You can also see branding. So you, you can see that this brand and this identity, you know, uh, invokes my local community. So think about using imagery, iconography. Your brand should invoke things that will speak to your local community, right? I can tell you, Helena, Montana has a much different vibe and aesthetic um, and imagery than say Tempe, Arizona. So think about using the imagery that's going to really uh, invoke sense of community uh, that's specific to where you're launching this fundraising initiative. Again, think about using marketing messaging here, using the countdown component and fundraising component. So this is an optional setting uh, in the fundraiser where you can put a title, a description, and you can choose to invoke the countdown and display the fundraising metrics, right? And of course, here you can see an example Rather than using individual businesses, uh, here you can use one brand, one image, one imprint to help support and raise money in your local community, right? So there's definitely a few different approaches here. We do think uh, this approach with getting each business's identity onto an, a fundraising store is the, the right uh, framework here and the right mix, right? Because there's more value in promoting my yoga studio brand to my again, fan base, right? But there's uh, certainly local fundraising approaches you can uh, take, which is an example on screen here. Let me give you another example. This is a single product. Help uh, support you know, our community and our staff. So here you can see, again, an example, maybe using a single product, uh, some messaging here to talk about you know, supporting um, our local business, right? So maybe think about doing a fundraiser for your own business. And think about extending that to your friend network and your family network who do want to help promote and prompt a uh, prop up your local business in a time of need. So you can see 318 shirts uh, sold at $25 each. Well, that's nearly $8,000 in uh, monies raised. Let me give a few other examples. And this is one that we used earlier from Anchor Screen Print, again, supporting their local community. You can see taking a similar approach by getting the branding from local businesses, a single dedicated online fundraising store to help promote all of these different organizations. So again, look at this outreach and look how many folks are participating. This just grows every single day. And every, every time this grows, you're adding a new product. Again, you're activating more and more people. The network effect is the thing that we need to focus on and concentrate on. Now, let me give you a few other awesome examples here. So here's an example of a distilling company, uh, I believe in Tennessee, Old Glory. Old Glory made national news by switching their production from, you know, distilling spirits into distilling hand sanitizer. And as a result of all that media coverage and attention, uh, you know, they connected with uh, their local uh, print business to launch a a t-shirt fundraiser. So as soon as you go to this fundraising, or excuse me, their, their corporate website, Old Glory Distilling, you're immediately greeted with a pop-up that says Old Glory Distilling T-shirt uh, Company you know, um, help support the Old Glory Distilling Company, the hand sanitizer campaign with your purchase, buy now. 
So that directs right to that Ingsoft online fundraising store. Last checked, the store has uh, generated about $30,000 in funds for Old Glory Distilling Company. So powerful, powerful um, you know, fundraising effort and results here. So I'm just trying to give a bit more exposure into the different fundraising opportunities uh, to help service your local community. I'll give you another example here. Uh, this just launched today. Uh, here is a decorator who's helping another organization in the community to raise awareness and raise funds uh, to help you know, feed children uh, who aren't getting access to school lunches. Uh, and you can see how they're using humor and they're using different graphics uh, to again activate people to pledge support and help out their local community. So again, although we've talked about the Here for Good fundraising framework, which is again a single store uh, to activate all the local independent businesses in your community, I just wanted to bring some exposure to the other paths of fundraising for again, local community. There's no one right way. Uh, in fact, if you can leverage all of these um, you know, uh, opportunities, you're gonna bring the most value to your community. All right, two things I wanna call out before we transition into questions. I know some businesses in the print industry, print community, of course, their doors are shut and they're ordered to stay home. Some people have print from home capabilities. I know there's a lot of chatter about connecting with contract decorators and there's been an amazing outreach on the Facebook, um, you know, Ingsoft Facebook group and others in terms of connecting. Um, but I, I do want to underscore two opportunities, um, you know, uh, Ingsoft partnerships. So I would certainly draw your attention to FM Expressions, one of our partners who, of course, specializes, is, is an industry leader in uh, screen printed heat transfers. So fortunately, their business is not impacted. There are no production or shipping delays. Um, so you can do single color. In fact, they have a dedicated program for single color heat transfers that are screen printed, high quality, fast turn times. So if you have access to a heat press, well, you can be in business of actually uh, fulfilling uh, on your fundraising program. So certainly, uh, you know, go to the Inksoft blog uh, and we have, of course, you know, reach out to Inksoft. We can connect you to get your free wholesale account with FM Expressions so you can get access to, uh, you know, professional screen printed heat transfers to be able to sustain your operations if your production capacity and capability is, uh, is affected. The other thing I want to call out is our partnership with Poly Concept. Poly Concept is one of the promotional product industry's largest single supplier of promotional products. So in their catalog, they have about 5,500 products that spans a broad range of different product categories. So uh, because of our partnership, you can get access to your free wholesale account. Uh, there's no obligation, no membership fees. And you also get access to the very best pricing as a result of our partnership. So again, reach out to Inksoft uh, to get access to your uh, Poly Concept account. I will point out, since some folks might be watching this video a month from now, uh, we'll make sure uh, below the uh, YouTube video, put links to all these resources. And of course, in the blog posting that will correspond, we'll link to all these resources as well. So the reason you want to activate your Poly Concept account is of course, you know they will uh, decorate and blind drop ship all of these promotional products on your behalf. So uh, there's of course other reasons to be selling and, and promoting um, you know, promotional products to be a, a one-stop provider uh, for your client's needs. But Poly Concept has done an amazing job in putting together marketing materials uh, that can help you craft programs to again support your local community. So think about first responders and those working in the medical field. You know, there's some promotional products that can uh, help you know, raise awareness and raise money to support those folks. And there's some really amazing products that will help uh, tell that story. So wanted to bring some awareness to those two opportunities.